I'll never forget my first home. It was a small 1,100 square foot ranch in Greenfield, Indiana. My wife and I purchased it in 2005 for just over $100,000. She was a fairly new teacher and I was still in school getting my education degree, subbing on my off days from class. It took every penny we had and more. Uh, mortgage rates were similar to what they are now, so we had to get a little creative. We used an adjustable rate mortgage, or an ARM, with a low upfront rate that would increase pretty substantially after five years. A little risky, but the goal was definitely to move or refinance before that five years was up. This was our starter home. Side note, ARMs got a lot of criticism due to their abuse that ultimately led, in part, to the housing crash of 2007. Uh, we knew the risks when we chose that option, and they still exist today, uh, but there are much better options for home buyers in 2023. Uh, I can't say arms are bad in every situation, uh, but again, they come with significant risks. Frankly, I probably wouldn't recommend them to most buyers today. Anyway, it was a cute little house, certainly not our forever home, uh, but we were proud of it. Looking back, though, I realized how little I knew going into it. Uh, I didn't know what questions to ask or what to look for. Uh, we knew what we liked and didn't like, but that was about it. Uh, I hadn't yet had to fix and replace a furnace, air conditioner, appliances, plumbing fixtures, and windows. I hadn't yet trimmed trees, replaced landscaping, or done much outside of cutting my parents' lawns at that time. Uh, we were young. Uh, we were typical first-time homebuyers. When I first decided to go into real estate, it wasn't to become a millionaire real estate mogul. Uh, in fact, there's a joke in real estate. Uh, we're glad we get taxed on the money we actually make and not on the money people think we make. But I love the creative outlets it gives me. I love applying my knowledge and interest in economics and markets and finance. I like getting to look at some unique and interesting homes. But mostly, I am committed to helping and supporting people making a huge financial investment in themselves and their future. I talk a lot about being a former high school teacher. I think that's because first, I'm proud of it. Uh, second, those kids made a huge impact on my life, uh, maybe more than I did on theirs. And third, especially working with seniors as much as I did, uh, who were about to go out on their own, I saw how unprepared we all are when we first set foot in the real world. So because of that, I feel I am particularly committed and protective of the first time home buyer. Whether you are 21 or 41, it's a huge step in one's life to buy a home and quite frankly, full of some serious consequences if big mistakes are made. This will be the first section of a two part post, but here are four steps to take before you ever set foot in a home you are thinking about buying. First, contact a good, trustworthy real estate agent. Some advice columnists put this further down the list, but I strongly believe it should be the very first thing you do once you decide you might want to purchase a home. Many home buyers and sellers wait way too long to contact an agent. First, it doesn't cost you any more or less to start talking to an agent early in the process. Uh, we don't charge by the hour. This may be a good or a bad thing, I don't know, but we only make money once a deal is closed. So you might as well take full advantage of a good agent's expertise from the beginning. Oh, and what makes a good agent? Well, this is maybe subjective, I guess, uh, but it should be somebody knowledgeable, has good communication skills with you and other agents, and who always keeps your needs first. Never let an agent push you to move too quickly for your comfort level. Uh, if they do, they probably aren't right for you and they really aren't looking out for you. Uh, some buyers are looking to make a move right away, so they want to move quicker. Others in three to six months and still others in a year or more. Uh, it's never too early to contact an expert for advice. Second, get your finances in order. An agent can help you with this, but before you start house hunting, take a close look at your finances. Figure out your budget, including your income, expenses, and debts. Uh, you can use online mortgage calculators to get an estimate of what your monthly payments would be based on different home prices. Uh, you'll want to know what you can realistically afford so you don't waste time looking at homes outside of your price range. Third, get pre-approved for a mortgage. This kind of goes along with number two. Uh, getting pre-approved for a mortgage is an important step in the home buying process and one I require from buyers before ever looking at a home. 
Pre-approvals don't take long and they aren't official loan approvals, but pre-approvals give you some assurance that you will have the financing to cover the home price you want to look at. Uh, it will also give you an idea as to your expected interest rates and other loan fees, although these definitely are not set in stone. Uh, and once you do find the home of your choice, a pre-approval shows sellers that you're a serious buyer and that you have the financial means to purchase their homes. Some sellers won't even consider offers without a documented mortgage pre-approval. And number four, have a face-to-face -face meeting with your real estate agent. This should happen before you ever tour a home. By now, you should already have somewhat of a relationship with your agent. You've gotten initial questions answered, uh, maybe chatted about some general needs and wants, looked into different neighborhoods, etc. Uh, but until you get a loan pre-approval, these conversations are sort of preliminary. Uh, now, once you have that pre-approval, it's time for the house hunting to begin. But there's one important step that too many buyers and agents skip, the buyer consultation meeting. This meeting is when we sit down around a table and talk about all of those must-haves and mustn't-haves uh, that you have been thinking about as you completed steps one through four. And possibly more importantly, this is where we really set a budget constraint. Once we get looking at houses, it can become really tempting to inch that budget up when you see what just a little bit more can buy you. Or you fall in love with a home that is outside of your budget and emotions begin to win out over logic. Trust me, we are all susceptible to that. And frankly, we can adjust your budget up if we've already decided that that is possible. Some buyers like to start with a really conservative budget knowing that they might need to increase it a bit. Uh, but again, we should be having that conversation before we ever look at a home. Finally, that face-to-face -face meeting will save all of us a ton of time. Agents who fail to have these meetings with buyers end up leading those buyers on a wild goose chase of sorts, looking at anything and everything that might fall within a certain price range. But this is often tiring and distracting. It takes the fun out of the house search, which honestly, it should be fun and exciting. Uh, so make a plan with your agent ahead of time. If you've watched some of my other videos, you'll see I'm big on making plans. And plans can always be adjusted if you find that your priorities change after looking at a few houses. That's pretty normal. Uh, but go in with a target in mind. Sometimes we have to be a little patient for the right home to appear, but otherwise you may end up frustrated and give up on that search altogether. These are obviously only the first steps of the process. Next week, I will continue this topic of first time home buyers with some thoughts uh, about what to look for as you begin to tour homes, uh, as well as a dive into some of the real estate realities that home buyers often don't think or know about. But don't wait until next week to contact me if you have any questions now.